Welcome to this Wise Owl tutorial on creating maps within PowerView. Here's what you'll learn during the tutorial. We'll begin by looking at creating the data model we need for our example, and then look at some of the prerequisites to use maps within PowerView. We'll then create a map, and then look at how to format it using the map layout options in PowerView. We'll look at how to make maps specific to your country, and then look at how to drill down to show data in more detail, before finally showing multiple maps, which is how you can show horizontal and vertical columns and rows of maps. So let's get started. Before we create any maps in PowerView, the first thing we need to do is create a data model in PowerPivot. Now regular viewers of tutorials in this series will be sick of doing this, so you might like to skip the next two minutes. For non-regular viewers, what you need to do is go to the blog linked to from this tutorial, and run the script to generate the SQL Server database. You can also use the Excel workbook. What you can then do in Excel is to go into Power Pivot, and you can then choose to link to a database. I'm going to go through this relatively quickly because most people have done this already. I put mine in an instance called SQL 2012. You can choose the MAM Maker Mammal database, and then you can choose the tables you're going to link to. I'm going to start in a slightly different order, so we'll start with the transactions table. That will link to the point of sale table. From there we're going to go up the geographical dimension to store, to center, to town, and to region. And then we'll also include the product table and the calendar table, just in case I need to aggregate by anything else. And as probably is familiar now, we're going to just get rid of the TBL at the beginning of each table. And the main reason for doing this is just for consistency with previous tutorials in this series. It would be a bit confusing to suddenly have all the tables having TBL at the beginning of the, beginning of the names. You can then choose Finished, and it will import the data, and then choose Closed to go into Power Pivot, go into Diagram View, and then what we need to do is to create the final relationship between the calendar table and the POS table by dragging the POS date onto the calendar date. You can then go into Excel, and we're good to create our first map. Just before we create our first map, the final thing we'll do is have a look at the prerequisites to be able to run PowerView. There's four of them. The first thing you'll need is Bing Maps. Microsoft, not surprisingly, use their own mapping application to create maps in PowerView, and so you'll also need an internet connection so you can download all the map data. The second thing you'll need is Silverlight. Now you've probably already got that on your machine. It's the equivalent or the Microsoft equivalent of Flash. If you haven't already got it, you'll automatically be asked if you want to download it, so it shouldn't prove a problem. The third thing you'll need is a fast machine. You're watching this tutorial on a laptop running Windows 7 with a processor and memory given there, and I still occasionally get an out of memory message. And the fourth and final thing you'll need is patience. I found PowerView and PowerMap especially to be a bit buggy not just on this laptop, but on all the other ones we use on training courses. It's possible that this is just to do with Windows 7, but I think unlikely. To create a map in PowerView then, the first thing you need to do is create a PowerView report. You can do that by going to the Insert tab in Excel and choosing PowerView. And what it will do is create a separate sheet for your PowerView view. And what I'm going to do is create a basic visualization in that. So what we're going to do is take the center and some things by the UK postcode, which is like a zip code for Americans, or anyone else for that matter. And for each postcode, we'll show the total quantity from the transaction table. And that will give me a table. And what I'm going to do is create a map of that. And the easiest way to do that, in fact, the only way that I know, is to click on the Map button on the Design tab of the ribbon. And it will automatically create a map. You can see it busily drawing all its points. There's an awful lot of them. And I'm going to end up with a map, which is basically just a sea of blue. So what I'm going to do is add a filter to my map by taking the number of units field in the center table and dragging it onto my view filter. And what I'll do is set the number of units to be a number greater than, let's say, about 200. 201 I've got there, the exact figure doesn't matter. And you can see now I'm just looking at the shopping centers where they have at least 201 units. And I've got far less blue bubbles. Now the next thing I'll probably want to do is to make the blue bubbles appear in different colors so I can see which shopping center is which. And to do that, I can do something very similar to what I did for charts, which is to take the postcode and make it the color legend also. And what will happen now is I can see which shopping center is which or which postcode is which. 
The next thing you'll probably want to do with your map is to change how it looks. The biggest change you can make is to click on your map and go to the layout tab and change the map background. At the moment I'm looking at a grayscale map roadmap background. It's much more exciting to look at a color one. I hope you'll agree. As well as a map background, you can also reverse the grayscale. That just is a terrible mistake. It just looks black. You can look at a satellite photo and you can look at a grayscale version of the same satellite photo. To my mind, the best one is the first one, so I'm going to go back to that. You can also choose to display data labels, which will overlay on top of the bubbles. So if I choose center, for example, it will put the postcode on top of each bubble, making the map extremely hard to read, so I'm going to get rid of them. You can move your legend around, so or get rid of it altogether. So for example, I'm going to put it at the bottom, which will mean I have to scroll across now to see all my postcodes. I don't like that, so I'm going to put it back on the right-hand side again, so I can see them all in one go. And finally, you can choose to get rid of the title. Probably a good idea because it's generated for you and you can't control it. So I could get rid of my title and then perhaps add my own. Because I'm not feeling very imaginative, I'll just call it map. So that's the layout changes you can make. One of the problems you can have at using maps, particularly if you're not in America, is that they tend to be centered around the United States. And to show this, what I'm going to do is click on the map get rid of the fields I'm in currently using. So for the location, remove the field. For the color, remove the field. And instead, I'm going to go to the town table, choose the town name, and make that my location, and also make it my legend color. You can probably see what's happened. Dudley is a suburb of the West Midlands. It's the home of Lenny Henry, who I doubt anyone outside the UK will have heard of. But it's definitely not on the east coast of America. It's actually in Birmingham, somewhere around there. The reason this is happening is because presumably there are two Dudleys. Now to get around this problem, you can go into Power Pivot, go into your data model. And what I'm going to do is for the town is add in a new calculated column. So I'm going to say take the town name and add on to the at something which says it's in the UK. I'll rename that and I'll call it UK Town. And it's probably a good idea to do the same thing with the center table. So what I'm going to do is do the same thing to make the postcode unique. So I'll take the postcode and add on UK onto the end of that. On this occasion, I didn't actually need to do that, but on other occasions, I found it to be a useful thing to do. And I'll call that UK postcode. What I can now do is go back into Excel. Because I've changed my underlying data model, it will prompt me and I'll need to choose OK. What I then need to do is click on the map choose not to use my town name field, which I know has problems with it, and instead use the UK town instead. So if I drag that down and make that both the location and the color, you'll see where Dudley actually is. It was, as promised, a suburb of Birmingham. What I want to do now is to show how to drill down in PowerView maps. And to do that, I've deleted the old PowerView report and I'm going to add another. So if we choose Insert, go to PowerView, and then within the report which appears, I'm going to choose, as I did before, to show the UK town. Within that, to show the postcode from the center table, I'll choose the UK postcode I just created earlier. And we'll show the total quantity from the transactions table. And what I'm going to do is turn that into a map by clicking on the map tab on the design tab. It says there's too many UK town values. That's because I'm just trying to display too much data in a single map. So I'll take the number of units, I'll filter by that, click on this little symbol twice to cycle me through the different ways of filtering, and show the ones where the number of units is greater or equal to 100. If I click on Apply Filter, you can see it can now cope with my data. I'll make my map a bit bigger. What I'm now going to do is to change the way my locations and my colors. So I've got my location as UK postcode. For some reason, it doesn't pick up the town. So I'll add in the UK town above that, just there. And for the color, I'll put the postcode in. So if I go up to the center table and drag the postcode down and make that the color. And I've now got the map I wanted to. If I zoom in on the glorious city of Manchester. And there it is in all its glory. Out of interest, this video is actually being made on about the L of Glossop there. But if I go to Manchester, you can see it's got three different postcodes. If I double click, it will zoom in and show me the three postcodes. This one, Central Manchester, had 149 sales in. This one had 157. And this little dot out here only had 34, which is why it has a smaller circle. 
When I finish looking at that, I can drill back up again by clicking on this symbol and I'll be back to look at things by town. Now I hope I've managed to make that look reasonably slick or at least reasonably coherent, but in practice I find there's a few problems with this. One of them is that when I was going through creating this example, Power Pivot Data Model crashed, it came up with an error message, and I think it would be dishonest of me not to mention this because it happens so often. My solution, as so often, was to exit Excel altogether and then go back into Excel, which solved the problem. Another problem I have is when you double click on towns to zoom in on them, it doesn't always seem to choose sensible locations for the postcodes, and basically I find it difficult to use to get really good results, but you may have more luck than me. The last thing I want to do in PowerView Maps is to show multiple maps. To do this, I'm going to show how to create a map showing the locations of the postcodes by product and by year. Let's start with the product. So in the product table, you have the product name field. And what I'm going to do is drag it down and make it a vertical multiple. And what PowerView will do is automatically create one map for each product, Crocky, Fred, Pinger, etc. It doesn't put them in vertical column because I haven't got a horizontal multiple, but that will change when I decide to add the calendar year in as well. So I'm going to go to the calendar table. I'm going to drag the year in and make that my horizontal multiple. And because I've now got both a horizontal and a vertical multiple, it will put the years going across the top and the products going down the left-hand side. It's saying I've got too many values, so what I'm going to do is to nudge my number of units up from being greater than or equal to 100 to greater than or equal to 200 and apply my filter, and that way it will get rid of that irritating message. You can see I'm looking at three products at a time there. I can use this scroll bar to scroll down and see more. What you can also do, as for the charts, is go to the Layout tab and change the grid height. So if I choose two, for example, I'll only see two products at a time and I'll be able to see more detail. I need to make this bigger now because I can only see one year, and in fact I think the problem is that my grid width should be two as well so I can see both years at the same time. If you like what you've seen and heard so far, why not head over to the WiseR website where you can find loads more free resources, including these videos, some written blogs and tutorials, and even some exercises that you can download to practice your skills. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.